Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I've been listening to the testimony and, and the questions, it, it strikes me that perhaps both sides are losing a perspective of why we have a First Amendment. Uh, it's because the freedom to speak our minds is absolutely essential to a free society. Uh, Jefferson said, error of opinion may be tolerated where reason is free to combat it. Uh, speech can be ugly, disgusting, hateful, prejudiced, and alarming, but it can never be dangerous to a free society as long as men and women of goodwill have the freedom of speech to dispute it, challenge it, and reject it. Uh, suppressing speech, even the most hate-filled speech, doesn't diminish its influence, it strengthens it. Uh, I think Churchill made this point very clearly when he said, it is the very conflict of spiritual and moral ideas which gives the free countries a great part of their strength. You see these dictators on their pedestals, surrounded by the bayonets of their soldiers and the truncheons of their police, yet in their hearts there is unspoken fear. They are afraid of words and thoughts. Words spoken abroad, thoughts stirring at home, all the more powerful because forbidden, terrify them. A little mouse of thought enters the room and even the mightiest potentates are thrown into panic. And then he goes on to say, a state of society where men may not speak their minds, where children denounce their parents to the police, where a businessman or small shopkeeper ruins his competitor by telling tales about his private opinions, such a state of society cannot long endure if brought into contact with the healthy outside world. Free societies don't punish words and thoughts, they punish deeds. And the reason for that is because words and thoughts can be countered by words and thoughts. That's why we have a First Amendment. And what we're seeing across the, the world today is that it is a very slippery slope between banning hate speech and banning speech we just hate. We've seen many examples even in our own country recently of legitimate speech being suppressed on college campuses, on social media platforms, uh, and even in public discourse. You know, if there's an ideology that we don't like, the weakest thing that we can do is try to forbid it or suppress it. The strongest thing we can do is to use our own freedom of speech to confront it and defeat it on its merits. If we allow our society to become one where men and women may not speak their minds, as Churchill said, we'll have lost the very quality that, he said, gives free countries a great part of their strength. As Churchill said, these ideologies cannot long endure if brought into contact with the healthy outside world, but that in turn requires unrestricted freedom of speech, precisely the freedom that's protected by our First Amendment. Now, we've made very limited exceptions when uh, speech becomes explicit incitement to do violence uh, or to falsely defame an individual's reputation, but even in the case of defamation, the truth is always an absolute defense. What we're hearing now is something fundamentally different. It's to set up government or corporate officials to decide what speech is acceptable and what is not. And that is a very dangerous power that can quickly be abused. Uh, today, a great deal of public discourse is conducted on social media, uh, major platforms like Google and Facebook uh, that are here today. Uh, we've granted them legal immunity from the content of their platforms under the assumption that they're merely providing a public square and that those who use it should be held accountable for their own statements. Uh, this is appropriate as long as these platforms are not practicing any form of censorship or favoritism uh, uh, other than, of course, uh, 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 censoring explicit incitement to violence. Uh, we're discovering, however, that they're indeed practicing censorship and political favoritism. Uh, this is their right as private corporations, but once they begin to practice censorship and political favoritism, they cease to be neutral platforms and instead become publishers who are responsible for their content and subject to action for incitement or defamation. So my question to the internet platforms represented here today is, I don't think you can be both. You can't be a neutral platform and at the same time exercising editorial control over content. So the uh, question very simply is, which are you? Are you a neutral forum, or are you a, um, an editorial publication responsible for your content? Mr. Potts, Ms. Walden, which is it? Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman. Uh, first and foremost, Facebook is a tech company. Uh, we are not a, a, a platform in that sense. We are not a content creator. We do not edit content, although we do moderate content under our community standards. Uh, after hearing your, your discussion, I think those are many of the, the issues that we wrestle with. 
to give people the ability to have a voice on a platform, but also to balance safety. We err on the side of allowing more speech. We want to give people the voice, but we do have to draw lines somewhere. And we feel that by drawing lines about, around things like calls to violence, even some things that are more uh, just egregious, child pornography, for example, by not having that on the platform, we'll give the platform to more people so they can share their voice. And so it's a, it's a constant tension that we wrestle with. We wrestle with daily. My teams wrestle with it all the time. We try to strike that balance. It's a hard one. We know that there are many opinions. We want to be across all the spectrum of ideas to have, to have those ideas uh, fostered on the platform. Uh, but again, it is, it is a difficult discussion. The, the concern is some- The uh, gentleman has expired. Ms. Walden may answer the question too. YouTube is a place where we want anyone to come and share their ideas, diverse opinions about their politics, um, things that are even controversial or offensive. Our community guidelines are, are politically neutral, um, and YouTube is a place where users are uploading content. So the community guidelines are in place to ensure that we are creating a free and open platform for users to upload their own content, um, but they're also in place to ensure that that's happening free from hate, from violence and harassment <coughs> on the platform. The time of the gentleman has expired. The 